So I've been getting all kinds of Math UC questions lately, and so I thought I would do a Math UC FAQ. So if you have a Math UC question, just send me a message on the story, and I'll try to add a little segment or show and tell for your Math UC question. First, probably one of the most frequent questions that I get about Math UC is, what do we do with the papers when they're done? So here we have a math page that got 100%. So I take it and we walk it straight over to the filing cabinet called the garbage can. No. However, if some corrections still need to be made, then it gets added back to the clipboard. If you need extra practice for your kids beyond what's in the notebook, they, you can print off worksheets based on what lessons you want them reviewing and print it right off and have them turn it in. Our students, when they finish their math page, turn it in to a little filing holder here and then it will get checked. Any math page in here will be checked. So one good question that I received was when our children correct their work. We do make them correct every math mistake so they have to get 100% before they can move on. Up until this year, they did their corrections on the same day. So they had to get their assigned page to 100% before they were done with school and could move on to their free time. That helped with motivation to get it do their best work the first time but sometimes it meant that I was still correcting math at four o'clock in the afternoon this year my husband asked how he could help out and I gave him the job of correcting math pages which is wonderful of course he corrects things after work sometimes at lunch but usually after work so that same day correction thing doesn't work anymore. So now they get one shot at a correction per day. Every page that still needs correction gets added to their clipboard in the morning with their new sheet. And if they get three strikes, they lose their privileges for the day, computer and playing with friends. We've just found that there has to be some kind of motivating factor for them to apply themselves to their math page. Someone also asked when we start Math UC. And we start Math UC with primer around five, sometimes six. If they want to do some math before that, I use Pam Barnhill's free number sheets. And I also use the calculator page uh, the first level of calculator that lets them practice writing their numbers. Of course, they also play with the math blocks quite a bit. So we might do a little counting with the math blocks, but they don't have to do any math pages. In fact, until they're around seven, they really just only have to do math when they want to. Um, there is no you having to have the math done before you do anything else until you're seven. And that someone else asked how long, we're, how far we're going to go in Matthew C. And um, right now my son is about to go into high school next year and he just started the geometry level. So he's finished algebra, he's into geometry. And in elementary school, he was behind, but he's caught up. So stick with it, make him work till mastery and it works. Matthew C does go through calculus and our plan is to continue using Matthew C throughout each child's homeschool career. We also use Khan Academy or other resources if necessary to explain a concept. Our current plan is also that our children will most likely do community college in for their junior and senior year of high school because our state has a program that allows high schoolers to do that. 
So they will get more upper level math with a math teacher that way, most likely. I got another question about how long it takes to do a lesson because the Matthew C lessons are set up to take about a week per lesson with 30 to 35 lessons per book. But that's just a guideline. That's just there as a benchmark, sort of. We ignore that pretty much completely. Really, Matthew C is a mastery program. So it's about doing the math until they understand it and can do it accurately and well. So they'll start a new lesson when they pass the previous one. They'll watch the lesson, do the A page, and we'll systematically work through those pages, one per day. But if they get 100% on the first try, they move to the next lesson. Simple as that, even if that's day two. So sometimes a lesson takes us three weeks, two weeks, a month even, and then sometimes it, we get in two or three lessons per week. It really depends. It's mastery paced, not at a mastery pace, not every page has to be done. And that's one reason why I tear the pages out of the book, because we don't do them all. And then on the other hand, sometimes we do more, which is why it's great that Matthew C has pages for each lesson you can print out from their website. But once they've mastered a concept in the lesson, they move to the next lesson. That's it. Uh-oh, time for some more clarification. If a child does get 100% on the A page, he still has to also get 100% on a systematic review. So he can choose to do a systematic review right after completing the A page. If he feels like he's got it and he's motivated to move on, then we let him do that. That's not usually what happens. And not infrequently, it is the problems on the systematic review that are the problem. And so sometimes they move forward quickly and then we realize on those systematic review pages that a previous concept still needs some more practice. And so we go back. So there's some back and forthing in our math progress. The goal is mastery. And that sometimes means going back before you can move forward. And then for the last couple and the first couple of weeks of our school year, we review. We just go back and pull old pages and do pages that we missed. Because we never start at the very beginning of a book and end a book in a year. We just pick up where we left off from our breaks. And forgetting something that was mastered previously is totally normal. So we just make sure and build in review. Have some progress and some backtrack and some progress and some backtrack. And that's how we work it. 